finish off section 7.2, derivatives of the sine and cosine function today. And what we're going to do is we're going to do go back to curve sketching. Remember that from chapter 5? So we're just going to sketch one curve today, y equals sine x plus cosine x. And I'm a little bit nervous about this because if I remember correctly, last year when I did this in class, this lesson took a long, long time. So I'm going to make a change here. I might regret this later, but I'm going to change this. We're going to go not from negative 2 pi up to 2 pi. We're going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And I think that will speed things up a little bit. So let's get started. The domain. Well, don't think about that too much because it gives you the domain right here. The domain is from 0, now that I've changed it, uh, up to and including 2 pi. Uh, if you want, you could write given here to remind yourself that uh, it gave us the domain right there. Okay, the y-intercepts. To get a y-intercept, what do you do? You put 0 into the x. So you'd have y equals sine 0 plus cosine 0. Sine 0 is 0. Cosine 0 is 1. So your y-intercept is 0 comma 1. X-intercept. To get the x-intercept, you put 0 into the y. So 0 equals sine x plus cosine x. Now, we have to solve this. So the way to do this would be move one to the other side. I'm going to move cosine x to the other side. So I'm going to have negative cosine x equals sine x. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by cosine. So I'm going to draw, divide this side by cosine x, and I'm going to divide this side by cosine x. Now, what are we left with here? Well, the cosine x and cosine x cancels, so we're left with negative 1. And on this side, we have sine x over cos x. Well, sine over co cos is the same as tan x. So what we have to figure out is, where is it that tan x equals negative 1? First of all, which quadrants is that? Tan is negative in the second quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. What's the reference angle? When is it that tan equals positive 1? tan equals positive 1 when it's 45 degrees. That's pi over 4. So in other words, we're going to have one angle here with a reference angle of pi over 4. This would be the standard position angle right there. How much is that? Well, that one is pi, the whole half circle, pi minus pi over 4, which is the same as 4 pi over 4 minus pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. So that's one answer. The other answer is this reference angle here in the fourth quadrant, pi over 4, and we got to figure out how much this angle is around there. How do we do that? We take the whole circle, which is 2 pi, and we subtract pi over 4. So to get common denominators, we have to multiply top and bottom by 4. You get 8 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. It's 7 pi over 4. So there's your two x-intercepts. One of them is 3 pi over 4, comma zero. You don't have to put the zero if you don't want to. The other one is seven pi over four, comma zero. Symmetry. Well, we put negative x into our x's. So what you'd end up with is y equals sine of negative x plus cosine of negative x. And then there's some identities about these negative angles. If you look it up on your sheet of identities, you'll see that sine of negative x is the same as negative sine x. And cos of negative x is just the same as cosine of x. So this is uh, what you get when you plug negative x into the x's. Now, is this exactly the same as what we started with? No, it's not because of the negative here. Is it the negation? No, it's not because this one stayed positive. So, in other words, there is no symmetry here. It's not odd, it's not even. Equation of slant asymptote. You get slant asymptotes when you have rational, sometimes, not always, but sometimes when you have rational functions. This is not a rational function, so none. Vertical asymptotes. You get vertical asymptotes when you have rational functions. There's no fraction here. It's not a rational function. So again, none. The one-sided limits near the vertical asymptote. Well, that doesn't make any sense because we don't have any vertical asymptotes. Not applicable. Horizontal asymptotes. Well, for both sine and cos, we know that they oscillate between a minimum of negative 1 and a maximum of positive 1. So we can't determine what the answer would be at infinity. 
So in other words, it doesn't exist. There's, there's no horizontal asymptote here. The other thing you can think of is for horizontal asymptotes, if there's no x in the denominator, there's not going to be a horizontal asymptote as well. Okay, so horizontal asymptote, none. Okay, first derivative. So the derivative of y equals sine x plus cos x, I've just rewritten what we started with. So we need the derivative. So y prime equals derivative of sine x is cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So this is our first derivative. Intervals of increase and decrease. All right, well here's where we need to uh, find our critical numbers. To do that we ask, when does this derivative not exist? It always exists. And the other question we have is, when does it equal zero? In other words, when does cosine x minus sine x equal zero? Well, let's move the sine x over. And then let's divide both of them by cosine again. And if you do that, you're going to get 1 on this side. Sine over cos is 10. So when is it that 10 equals 1? Well, this is just like what we did before up here. But this time, we have the same reference angle, but this time we're going to be in the first quadrant and fourth quadrant, because tan is positive. So in the first quadrant, since the reference angle is pi over 4, it's going to be pi over 4. So x equals pi over 4. And in the third quadrant, if we had pi over 4 over here, how would we figure out this angle right here? We would take pi and add on pi over 4. So I'll just do it right here. Pi plus pi over 4. That's 4 pi over 4 plus pi over 4. It's 5 pi over 4. So these are the numbers that you need to put on your wiggle graph. We have pi over 4. We have 5 pi over 4. You should also put your endpoints. So our endpoints are 0 and 2 pi. And we're going to test these out up here. So something between 0 and pi over 4. How about pi over 6 or 30 degrees? So cosine of pi over 6 or 30 degrees is root 3 over 2 minus um, sine of pi over 6 or 30 degrees is 1 half. So root 3 over 2 minus 1 half. Is that positive or negative? Well, root, root 3 is more than 1, so this is going to remain positive when you subtract. So it's positive in here, which means it's increasing. Between pi over 4 and pi, 5 pi over 4. How about pi over 2 or 90 degrees? Cosine of pi over 2 is 0 minus sine of pi over 2 is 1. So you get 0, negative, zero take away 1, which is negative 1. It's negative, or it's decreasing here. And between 5 pi over 4 and 2 pi, how about 3 pi over 2? 3 pi over 2 is the same as 6 pi over 4, so it's a little bit bigger than this. So this is 270 degrees, right? Cosine of that is 0. And sine of 270 degrees is negative 1. 0 take away negative 1 is positive 1. It's positive. So this interval is also increasing. So our intervals of increase are from 0 to pi over 4. Now I'm going to do something strange here. I'm going to put rounded bracket here. I'm going to put square bracket there. Why? Because 0 wasn't one of our critical numbers. It was just an uh, endpoint, which means at that endpoint, since it's not one of the critical numbers itself, it's actually increasing here, right? It's not a point where it's a maximum or minimum. Uh, as well, you have an interval of increase from 5 pi over 4 all the way up to 2 pi, square bracket, because again, that was not one of the critical numbers. We're only using it because it's an endpoint, which means it's still increasing when we hit that 2 pi. Only at the critical numbers is it where it's a maximum or minimum, and hence where it's not increasing or decreasing. Intervals of decrease would be from pi over 4 up to 5 pi over 4. Those are both critical numbers, so you don't include those. Okay, local maximum. That would be where it goes from increasing to decreasing. That's right here. So we have a local maximum at pi over 4, and then we need to know what point is that. So we need to plug pi over 4 into this green function up here. So that means we would have sine of pi over 4 plus cosine of pi over 4. Well, pi over 4 is 45 degrees, and whether it's sine or co cosine, it's root 2 over 2. So we have root 2 over 2 plus another root 2 over 2, which equals 2 root 2 over 2. The 2's cancel, you get root 2. So pi over 4 comma root 2 is our maximum.
For minimum, that would be when it goes from decreasing to increasing. That's right here at 5 pi over 4. So again, we need to plug that into our green function here, the original function. So we get sine of 5 pi over 4 plus cos of 5 pi over 4. These are both third quadrant uh, angles with the same reference angles before. In the third quadrant, they're both um, negative, and the reference angle is 45 degrees for both of them. So this time, it's not going to be root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2. It's going to be negative root 2 over 2 plus negative root 2 over 2. If you do all the simplifying and everything, you're going to end up with negative root 2. Okay, now I've rewritten the derivative, not the original function, but the first derivative here, and we have to find the second derivative. So, second derivative equals the um, derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. The derivative of sine x is cos x, so you get negative cosine x. Intervals were concave up and concave down. We need to find the pips, so the potential inflection points. Uh, find where this second derivative doesn't exist. It always exists. Find where it is equal to zero. So when is this equal to zero? Let's move the sine over, so you get negative cosine x equals sine x. And let's divide both sides by cosine x. You get negative 1 equals tan x. Well, wait a minute, that should look pretty familiar. Uh, we solved that before. When does tan x equal negative 1? Go back to the previous page. Here it is right here. Tan x equals negative 1 when x is 3 pi over 4 and x is 7 pi over 4. So those are our numbers that we're going to put on our wiggle graph. I'll just write them again here. 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So that goes on our wiggle graph and also include the endpoints. Okay, we're going to test those. Where are we testing them? Right here. So let's start by check, uh, testing something down here. How about pi over 4, 45 degrees, because for both sine and cosine, it's uh, root 2 over 2. So you'd have negative root 2 over 2 minus another root 2 over 2. I think we did this on the other side. You get negative 2 root 2 over 2. Those cancel. You get negative root 2. So this is going to be negative or concave down here. Okay, between 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4, how about pi? 4 pi over 4. That would work. Pi. Okay, at pi, or 180 degrees, sine is 0, and cosine is negative 1. So you'd have 0 take away negative 1, which is positive 1. So this is concave up. Okay, finding something between 7 pi over 4 and 2 pi is difficult. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm guessing I'm going to use uh, reference angle 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. So let's get a common denominator of 4 and 6, which is 12. I know this is confusing here. So 7 pi over 4 is the same as, if I multiply top and bottom by 3, 21 pi over 12. And this is 2 pi over 1. If I get a common denominator of 12 here, multiply top and bottom by 12, I get 24 pi over 12. So if I pick something like 22 pi over 12 or 23 pi over 12, it would work. I'm going to try 22 pi over 12, which is the same as 11 pi over 6, which is 330 degrees. It's this uh, fourth, fourth quadrant angle where you have a 30 degree reference angle, and this is the actual angle that you're interested in. So it's 330 degrees, a uh, standard position angle. So if we look at that, uh, in that quadrant, sine is negative, and sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So you would have negative 1 half take away. Now, cosine's positive. So it actually doesn't matter what cosine the value is. It turns out it's root 2 over 2. But when you take a negative and subtract more, then you end up with a bigger negative. It's definitely going to be negative. So you end up with concave down here. OK, intervals where it's concave up, that would be from 3 pi over 4 up to 7 pi over 4. And intervals where it's concave down, that would be from 0. Again, 0 was not one of our pips, so this would include 0. It's just the endpoint. It's not an actual pip. Uh, up to 3 pi over 4, not including that, as well as from 7 pi over 4 up to 2 pi, including 2 pi. It's just the endpoint. Points of inflection would be when it goes from negative to positive or positive to negative. Unfortunately, that means we have two of them. We have 3 pi over 4 and something, and we also have 
7 pi over 4 and something. So we got to plug those values into here. This is our original function I've written here. So 3 pi over 4, that is a reference angle of 45 degrees. It's in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, cosine's negative and sine's positive. And 45 degrees, they have the, the same amount. They're both root 2 over 2. So one's going to be positive root 2 over 2. One's going to be negative root 2 over 2. You combine them, you get 0. 7, point, 7 pi over 4 is pretty well the same thing. It's in the fourth quadrant this time with a reference angle of 45 degrees. So sine and cosine are going to be the same again, except this time sine's going to be negative and cosine's going to be positive. So again, you're going to have one neg one's negative root 2 over 2, one's positive root 2 over 2. You add them together and you get 0. Okay, we're ready to graph this thing. Unfortunately, when I put this graph here, I was intending that we go all the way from negative 2 pi up to 2 pi. So we're going to use the right-hand side here. Uh, so obviously, we're going from 0 up to 2 pi. And it seemed like we had a lot of pi over 4s and 3 pi's over 4. So why don't we go up by that amount? We'll go pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, which is pi, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and then 8 pi over 4, which is actually 2 pi. What was our maximum value here? The maximum was root 2, and root 2 is approximately 1.4, and our minimum is negative root 2. So if this is 1 and this is 2, then somewhere around here would be root 2. Similarly, if this is negative 1 and this is negative 2, then somewhere around there would be negative root 2. Okay, let's start graphing. Y-intercept at 0, 1, x-intercepts at 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So 0, 1, 3 pi over 4, 0, and 7 pi over 4, 0. Maximum is at pi over 4, minimums at 5 pi over 4. So at pi over 4, we're at the maximum which we said was at root 2, and 5 pi over 4 were at the minimum, which we said was at negative root 2. One more point you should definitely consider is what's going to happen at 2 pi. Well, 2 pi is just coterminal to 0. So if at 0 it's at 1, at 2 pi it's also going to be at 1. Okay, this is sine and cosine graphs. They won't always look like this, but can you see what it probably looks like? I think chances are it's going to go like this. What's happening between 0 and pi over 4 in terms of increase, decrease? From 0 to pi over 4, it's increasing. And that looks pretty good. It's increasing here, and then it starts decreasing. Sure hope it's concave down, all this part here. Concave down from 0 up to 3 pi over 4. Great. It's concave down all the way to here. And then it looks like we're going concave up. And that looks good. Uh, one last check I'll do. Does it start increasing from 5 pi over 4 to the end? Yep, from 5 pi over 4 to 2 pi, it's increasing. In between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, it should have decreased. That's exactly what we found. It decreased, and now it should be increasing again. If you want one last check, it should be concave up from 3 pi over 4 to 7 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 to 7 pi over 4. Yep, here's our inflection point and now it's going concave down again after that. We've done it. We have our graph drawn. Way